So as you can see, what I've done here is I've downloaded a poster template and I've just gone in and created my poster using this template. Now for the purposes of the recorded presentation, obviously this is a little bit difficult for folks to be able to see when they're trying to understand the poster. So what I will do is I will actually go to my screen capture program and I will essentially capture the screen that's here. So if I am on a Mac, that would be Command Shift 3, and that will do a screenshot. And if I am on a PC, I will click on Windows Print Screen, and that will do a screenshot. And what that will allow me to do is capture an image that then I can put into a PowerPoint presentation. So as you can see, I've taken a bunch of pictures of my original poster here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy and paste those into the six slides that will form my actual presentation. So I've got that one done now. So let's move to the second one. And I'll copy that one in and go over and paste that and so on. Now once I have them all copied in, you'll see essentially if you were to look at this as a actual PowerPoint presentation, it kind of looks like I'm just moving around and focusing in on different parts of the poster as I'm talking through my presentation. So it still gives the appearance of a more traditional poster presentation. The other option I have, of course, for the recording is I could actually just create a more traditional PowerPoint presentation. So you can see here, I just got a title slide and then I've got my content put on the subsequent slides and then I've got a concluding slide at the end where folks can find additional information. Regardless of how I create the PowerPoint presentation, I want to make sure that I write out a script to read from. And I want to practice reading this script on several occasions because one of the things that you'll find is that oftentimes we talk for longer than what we had expected when we are talking off the cuff about something. The second is that oftentimes we will find that there are things that we focus a little too much on and things that we wanted to have spent more time on that we didn't spend enough time on. The third thing is that by having a script that we've practiced from, it takes away from the ums and ahs, the filler things that we often do to provide us time to think about whatever it is that we plan on saying next. Finally, the nice thing about a script is, is that you can make sure that it fits within the time restrictions that you're given for these recordings. In terms of how you can record your presentation, if you don't have any screen recording software already on your computer, if you go into any of your courses on Canvas, look over here on the left hand side for an item that says Yuja. That's a screen recording program that you can use. Not all of your instructors may have it engaged, so you might have to look in a couple of different courses in order to find it. But when you do find one that has it, all you have to do is click on Yuja. And it will bring up a new system, and you can see I've got a recording that I've created in there already. What you want to do, though, is create a new recording. And to do that, if you go here to the middle of your screen, you'll see these two buttons, Manage Media and Create Recording you'll want to click on the create recording option and I want to record from my Windows PC or Mac and if I'm a first time user I want to download and install it first so let's do that so it's downloading to my computer you can see here now and I'm going to open it up and install it
and now that it's installed on my pro computer it'll ask me that I can start it now so when I click on start I have to open that and it's opening up the Uja software and you can see it here now and it's showing the video of me and you can see my green screen in the back but that's okay because I don't want any video source so I'm gonna click on no video source I just want a screen capture and you can see I've got my microphone here and I'm gonna change which microphone I'm using to one of my USB ones so you can see now that I've got my microphone in and I want my screen and I don't want it to be live and the profile that's fine so now that I'm done I can go over here and click start now it's gonna stay it starts in three now obviously I don't want to capture this Uja screen or this canvas screen but I can go over to my PowerPoint presentation and now I can start my presentation and you'll see down here in the corner you can see that the Uja uh, control bar is down in the bottom right hand corner and I can go about reading the script that I've printed off that I produced earlier so that I can go through and give my entire presentation and have it all recorded. Now once I'm finished recording I can just click on the square button here so I'm going to click on save here now down here in the bottom it's starting to upload and it'll give me a status bar and I'm just gonna get out of my PowerPoint here and you can see now it's starting to upload and the status bar is going across so it's finished that one now and if I go over into my canvas again and click on the my media you can see that the recording that I just did right now is available to me here now when you see these dots going across like you do now essentially it's still rendering and it might take a while to render uh, depending upon the nature of the recording and your computer and for that matter how busy Uja is right now it could take as much as four times as long as what the recording is so if you did a five minute poster presentation it's entirely possible that it could take 20 minutes or more for it to actually upload. So now you can see that it is ready to go and you can see it's ready to go because the dots are done. But now you'll remember if we were to watch this, it's going to pick up all of the information that I had from when I first started to going over to where the presentation was. It's picking up all of that information. Now, I don't necessarily want to have all of that information in there. I just want it to really start back around right here when I actually started my presentation. So, in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to edit this video. So, if I go back, you'll see that one of my options is to edit. So, I can edit the video and it'll bring me into a really basic editor and then what I can do here is I can click on the scissors I guess they are and I can move my items over here to when I first start doing that and now that will cut out those first 12 and a half seconds where I was actually getting to where I needed to be in the actual recording so when I actually save this version, that part of it will end up being cut out. And then I can do the same thing, say, here at the end. So let's take my timer and move across to the end. Say I want to get rid of the last couple of seconds here after I closed out. And you can see up here, you'll see when I actually did things. So it's around right about there which is when I stopped my presentation so I can now take my scissors again and I can just drag this over here and it'll go to the end so that way now I only have here this part in the middle which was my actual presentation and now I can click save on that up there and it'll say do I want to um, exit without saving which I don't want do I want to replace the existing video and it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to do that 
or you can save it as a new video. Um, I'm actually going to say um, Michael Barber Final. So that way I know that it's my final version. And I'm going to save it as a new video. And you can see my edit is actually going and it's thinking. And now you can see it's actually processing those edits. And it'll take a couple of minutes to make the changes. But once that's done, then you'll be able to actually download that file. And you can see now that it's finished processing. And you can tell because the um, dots aren't there anymore. And when I come up here now and look at the different options, I want to click on the more. And then you'll notice that the fifth option down is download. And it will allow me to download this particular item. So in this case, I want to download the audio and video content. And I'm just going to click on download media. And I want it to be a single file. And click on request media. And it's going to process and it will email me with a link when it's ready to download. And then the file that you get from downloading the media that you get in that email is the one you will upload to the system. Now, if you have your own screen capture program, then feel free to use that. But if you don't have access to one, this is one that we have available to us through Toro University.